Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indusar Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about parallelepipeds, and uh, today's lecture is about the volume of parallelepiped. Well, first of all, what is volume? Um, volume is obviously a quantitative characteristic of the space occupied by some body, solid body, like parallelepiped. What's very important about volume, this is an additive measure. Now, what it means is that if I have one particular solid body, which has certain volume, which characterizes how much space it occupies, and I have another one, um, a solid body with its volume, then additiveness of, of the volume means that both of these solid bodies together occupy the volume which is equal to a sum of the volumes of each uh, of each individual one which means that for instance if you have a, a large object and you divide it in two different pieces then the volume of the whole uh, the whole object is equal to the sum of the volumes of, of, of its pieces so that's what additiveness means um, okay, now, obviously, if we are measuring something, we have to have the unit of measurement, right? So, um, the unit of measurement of the volume is, by definition, a little cube with edge equals to some... Um, uh, linear unit like one meter for instance in one systems in one system or, or one inch in another system or whatever so if we have as a unit of volume a cube with the edge equal to one meter it means we are measuring the volume in cubical meters or in cubic meters that's how many these cubes can fit into a particular uh, solid body, like parallelepiped, for instance. All right, that's uh, easy to say, but it's not that <laughs> easy to, to, to demonstrate, and here is why. Let's consider the first example. We have a rectangular parallelepiped with sides A, B, and C. Uh, you know what, it's probably right to say B on, on the bottom and C on the height. Let's say this is B and this is C. So, this is a rectangular parallelepiped, which means that uh, A, B, C, D is a rectangle as well as A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. And every side um, face of this parallelepiped is also a, a rectangle. So all of them are, are rectangles. So these are right angles. All of those angles are right. Now, let's also consider that all linear dimensions, A, B, and C, these three dimensions basically determine, uh, completely determine our rectangular uh, parallelepiped. They are all integer. Why did I have to put it as an in integer values? Well, because I would like this cube, which has um, an edge of 1, to fit completely inside this parallelepiped. Now, obviously, if my dimensions are integer a, b, and c, I can put a cubes Um, along this edge and B cubes along that edge 
in one row which will have a height of 1. That will be my first row of cubes. And again, considering A and B are integer, I will have exactly A times B, um, uh, these little cubes, uh, fit into the bottom layer of this um, parallelepiped. Then the second layer will also have exactly the same. And how many layers will I have? If this is C and C is integer, obviously I will have C layers. So my volume would be equal to A times B times C. Or, if you wish, the area of the uh, base, which is A times B, times height, which is C. So S is area of the base and H is height or altitude of the uh, parallelepiped. So in case this is a rectangular parallelepiped with integer um, sides A, B and C, then the volume is measured as this or this. Okay, that was an easy uh, part of it. It's very easy with integer, but what if it's not integer? What, what if uh, AB is equal to 5.5, let's say, of the same units as this one? So obviously I will not be able to put um, integer number of these cubes along that H. So what should I do? Okay, let's consider the next case. Let's say A, B, and C are uh, rational numbers. Now, uh, it's three rational numbers. I, I can obviously uh, use one common denominator and say that A is equal to P divided by N, where N is common denominator. B is equal to Q over N, and C is equal to R over N. So these are three rational numbers. So any three rational numbers can be brought into this kind of form if as n I will use the common denominator. All right. Now, how should I approach measuring this particular volume in this case? Here is my suggestion. Let's divide this cube, the unit cube, uh, into, um, into little cubes um, which have um, the side equals to 1 over n. The same n is here. Now, if the side of the cube is 1 and the side of a little cube is 1 over n, it means that I have exactly n little cubes um, fit along this edge and n a little, uh, little cubes along this edge and uh, n little cubes along the vertical edge. So the total number of little cubes in this one cube would be n times n times n, which is n cube. Right? So that's how many little cubes. Now, little cubes are better than the big cube, the unit cube, in this particular case, because I can fit an integer number of little cubes with this edge into each side. Well, how many? Let's see. If my edge of the little cube is equal to 1 nth, and my side A is equal to P nth, it means I can put exactly p uh, little cubes along this edge. And obviously, similarly, I can put q along this edge, the b, and r along this edge. So my volume would be equal to p times q times r times uh, 
V, where V is equal to value of the uh, little cube. Oh, by the way, this is not the volume, this is number of cubes. So the volume is equal to, I'm sorry, this is number of cubes. So if the volume is n to the cube, if number of cubes, of little cubes is n to the cube, then the volume of each one of them, uh, let's put it uh, uh, little x here. dx will be equal to the volume of the little cube. If there are n to the third to the power of, uh, of, of three uh, little cubes inside the cube which has a unit uh, uh, volume, it means that each one of them is this. So here, this is vx. So here I will have p times q times r little cubes. Each one of them has volume vx. And this volume is n to the third degree. So it would be p times q times r divided by n cube equals to p over over n times q over n times r over n equals to a times b times c. As you see, we have exactly the same formula as with integer a, b, c, which is equal to uh, area of, of the base times h. So, even with rational a, b, and c, edges of the rectangular uh, parallelepiped, I still have the volume expressed as the product of these three lengths or the product as a, an area of the, of the base times the height. Now, irrational. Well, that's difficult. I cannot do any manipulation of that side and I really have to go back to the definition of what is a rational number. And uh, this is a very, um, I would say, obscure part of the mathematics because it involves, um, to approach it rigorously, you really have to approach it using the limit theory and stuff like this. So, because basically every irrational number can be um, approximated to any degree of precision with the set of rational numbers. And this process of approximation to a better and better um, uh, uh, precision is the, the, the root of the next statement which I'm going to do, which I'm going to make. So the next statement is that even with irrational a, b, and c, because each irrational number can be um, as close as possible to some kind of a rational number, and with rational number this formula is correct, it means that with any degree of precision, I can actually say that a times b times c, even if these numbers are irrational, they do represent the volume. Because again, I can always replace a with certain rational number, uh, and b with certain rational number, and c with ra a rational number, which, has v which are very, very close. I mean, as close as I want. Um, to this irrational. And that's why we basically can um, feel, and if, even if it's not 100% rigorously proven, but the approach is, as I was just saying, approach is to approximate any irrational number with a rational, and this is true for rational, so which means this, is, will, this will be true for irrational numbers. So that covers the rectangular uh, parallelepipeds. So for any rectangular parallelepiped, the volume is equal to a product of its three sides with common vertex or uh, area of the uh, base times the height or altitude. Now let's go to a next complexity level. Uh, from the rectangular parallelepipeds, we go to the right parallelepipeds. Now the right parallelepipeds are different even one particular aspect. At the base, I don't have a rectangle. I have just any parallelogram. However, these uh, edges are really perpendicular to the base because it's a right um, uh, parallelepiped. So, 
any right par par <coughs> any right parallelepiped has the side edges perpendicular to the bases. Bases are parallel, obviously, and uh, congruent parallelograms. So that's the case which I'm going to consider next. Let me wipe out this. And I will leave my beautiful picture Okay, so now we assume that A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D is not a rectangle but a parallelogram. Now, if you view this particular uh, parallelepiped from the top, what do you see? Well, you will see the parallelogram. Right? A, B, C, D. Now, since these are perpendicular to the plane, uh, A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime will be projected to exactly A, B, C, and G. These are all perpendiculars, right? So that's what you will see if you will look from the top. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I will do a perpendicular from the B to AC, call it point M. And then, on the continuation, I will put perpendicular from D to N. Now, it's very easy to prove that the triangles C, N, D and A, M, B are congruent. Number one, they are right triangles, right? Because these are perpendiculars to this line. Now, this is equal to this because it's a ABCD is a parallelogram, and the angles are the same, obviously. And uh, these lines are parallel, so this is also the same um, as distance between parallel lines. I mean, we have lots of elements here. Actually, it was enough, even the first two. It was hypotenuse and uh, an acute angle are congruent to each other. So, triangles are exactly congruent. Which means, if I will take ABCD parallelogram and I will wipe out this piece but add this piece I will subtract something and I will add something. These are congruent triangles which means their areas are supposed to be the same. Which means that the area of this rectangle exactly the same as area of the parallelogram so we are we are writing the wrong if you wish so from the parallelogram which used to be before I convert this parallelogram into a uh, uh, rectangle with the same area now I would like to do it in three-dimensional picture. So, from B, I drop a perpendicular to AD, something like this. And on the continuation of this, I drop a perpendicular from uh, AB, CG. Well, I have different letters here. Doesn't really matter. And um, so from this continuation, you know what, I'll probably redraw my button. It's too many lines here. So this is A, B, C, and G. So this is perpendicular M. BM is perpendicular to AG. And CN is perpendicular to the same line. So everything, all these letters, A, B, C, G, M, and N, are in the plane which is a, a base plane of this uh, picture. So, 
what I'm basically doing right now, I would like to convert my uh, right parallelepiped into rectangular parallelepiped. So I um, did this operation on the base. Now I will cut with the plane. So from here, I will cut here. So that would be my M prime. And here I would add that would be N prime. And I will connect this to this. And okay. So what I will cut from my parallelepiped is a right triangular prism one second um, so I will write uh, I will cut from my parallelepiped a triangular prism A B A prime B prime M prime a, B, M. So I will cut it off. And I will add a, in exactly the same in, in, in all the dimensions uh, 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 and obviously the volume uh, prism which has base C, D, N and on the top base C prime, D prime, N prime. It's exactly the same triangular prism as this one. Well, the same it means con congruent in, in all respects because bases are, are the same, edges are the same, they're all perpendicular, I mean everything is the same which means I will convert my um, right parallelepiped A, B, C, D, A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime into a rectangular uh, parallelepiped B, C, N, M, B prime, C prime, N prime, M prime which has exactly the same volume and it has exactly the same volume because I'm cutting a piece from the uh, old one and adding that piece on another side, thereby converting my uh, right uh, parallelepiped into rectangular parallelepiped. Now, about rectangular, I do know that its volume equals to the uh, uh, product of um, area of the base times height. But the area of the base, which is M and C, B, is exactly the same as area of A, B, C, D. Because of this, we are adding triangle and subtracting triangle. So that's why my formula actually remains exactly the same. Because this is the, prod, uh, this is the volume of the rectangular uh, pyramid, the new one, and the new base. Height is exactly the same, the old and, 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 and the new one. Now, the old volume is exactly the same as the volume of the uh, re rectangular uh, parallelepiped because I subtracted one and added one. Area of the base is also exactly the same, old and new, because of, again, I added a triangle and subtracted a triangle, which means the formula is still exactly the same. The formula for the right uh, par parallelepiped is um, volume is equal to uh, area of the base times its altitude or height. And the base is just any parallelogram. So this is one step forward from rectangular parallelepiped to any. So this step was from rectangular to the right. So I still preserved the perpendicularity of the edges. Now, the last step is, forget about perpendicularity. Now, I did use the perpendicularity in this particular case when I switched from the rectangular to the right. Now we are going from the right to any, which means that the whole construction can be tilted. Let's draw another. And I will basically do exactly the same, maybe a little bit less rigorous. So we have, again, some kind of a parallelogram on the top.
and then these are slanted. Something like this. Okay. Can I write this particular wrong, if I can say so? Well, basically, I should use exactly the same approach. What I should do is, first, I should write the edges, which are side edges. So, I will drop perpendiculars from A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime onto the base, which is here. Well, this is parallelogram, so it will project into some kind of other parallelogram. Let's say... If I will drop a perpendicular here, a perpendicular here, perpendicular here, it's not pretty picture, but anyway, perpendicular here. So this will be C second, B second, A second, and D second. So now within this plane, I have two parallelograms. Original one, A, B, C, D, and the projection of the top one onto the bottom, which is A uh, second, B second, uh, C second, and D second. Now, what I would like to say is, that the volume of the original parallelogram, which has the base A, B, C, D, and A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, is exactly the same as the volume of the new parallelogram, which has the base A second, B second, C second, and D second, and the top base is exactly the same as the first one, A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. How can it be visible? Well. Unfortunately, it's not easy to imagine in three-dimensional space. But basically, you, you really have to consider this as, again, transformation when I'm cutting a piece and adding a piece. So this type of um, projection converts uh, this slanted parallelepiped into the straight one. And the difference between them is something which, like you, for instance, you add this particular... Um, uh, it's kind of a pyramid, I guess, for instance. So you add some pyramids here, and you uh, subtract some pyramids there, and by manipulation um, these, of these parts, you are, again, you are adding something on one side, and you're subtracting something on another side. And whatever you add and subtract is exactly uh, the same. So whatever you cut from here, you add to there. And whatever you add here, you subtract from that side. Um, so I would probably recommend you to try to draw a nice picture, not much, much better than I do. And then it will be kind of obvious. So whenever you're shifting the bottom part from whatever it was before, A, B, C, D, into the new location, A uh, second, B second, C, C second, and D second, your whole object is transformed, and this transformation can be expressed as adding a piece on one side and subtracting from another side. Whatever that piece is, it may be a, a, a pyramid or it may be some kind of a more complex figure, but whatever it is, you are always adding and subtracting the same thing, which means the volume is exactly the same. Uh, and since the volume of the new, and in this case, the new one is the right parallel paper, right? Because I dropped the perpendiculars. And since the volumes are equal, the volume is still the same uh, of the right pyramid, which is uh, area of the, uh, of the base times height. 
Now, area of the base a second, b second, c second, and g second is exactly the same as a prime, b prime, c prime, d prime, is exactly the same as parallelogram a, b, c, d. So we still have exactly the same formula, which is area of the base times height. Now, height in case of any parallelepiped is basically a distance between two parallel bases because that's the length of this perpendicular a prime a second all right so the point is that in any parallelepiped this is the formula it's a very general formula area of the base which can be a parallelogram obviously not necessarily a, a rectangle times the height of the uh, of the uh, of this uh, parallelepiped and the height of the parallelepiped is, in case of a right parallelepiped, it's obviously the edge length. But if it's a slanted one, it's just the distance between two parallel uh, planes which are making the two bases. Well, that's it. I just wanted to demonstrate this formula for any kind of a uh, volume of uh, any kind of a parallelepiped. And uh, I do recommend you maybe to try to draw this a little bit better uh, than I do. Um, but at least you should understand that you always can find equal uh, elements like a a prime is equal to c c prime and a prime a second is equal to c prime c second and everything every element and every angle every length of a segment and every angle between segments and even angles between planes are exactly the same on that side and on that side. That's why I'm, I was talking about adding piece and subtracting piece. All right, that's it for today. Thanks very much and good luck.